Good morning. It's always a pleasure to stand before the heavens and God's children. We have been going through some very trying, challenging times here. Uh, we've been experiencing a lot of deaths, people losing their jobs, their well-being. But I would encourage you today to hold on to the unchanging hand of the Lord. He is aware of the situation that is going on on this earth. There is nothing that can escape his sight. All things are open to him. And with that being said, as the scripture uh, text that was read in your hearing this morning, we will touch on that. But we understand that there are individuals in this world today who write articles, who write letters, poems, and who also write books. So in this process of writing, this is something which comes from the being of that individual, right? So it is with the Elohim. From Genesis chapter one in verse one to Revelations chapter 22 in verse 21, all scripture according to 2 Timothy 3 and 16, all scripture is given by the inspiration of God and is profitable for doctrine, for reproof, for instructions and in training in righteousness that the man of God may be perfectly equipped unto all good works. We must believe this. Just as I said before how individuals write, God speaks from his divine being and translates it into words in a book. But yet these words has a great impact on the individual that comes to him with an open heart. You see, God used men in the past to demonstrate this in 2 Peter chapter 1 and verse 20 and 21, first of all, you should know this. You should know this. No prophecy of the scripture comes from one's own interpretation. It did not have its origin with man. Man did not come up with this. This was in the Father before the foundation of creation. We are blessed, those of us who have had the opportunity to say, Yes, I believe in the Father and the Son and the Holy Spirit and be baptized in the Christ. Verse 21 says, because no prophecy ever came by the will of man. Instead, man spoke from God as they were moved by the Holy Spirit, carried on by the Holy Spirit as a boat with the sail on it is carried on by the wind. So man of the past who spoke for God by way of the Holy Spirit in that way. You see, we must understand that God is spirit and those who worship him must worship him in spirit and in truth, says St. John chapter four in verse 24 and his uh, discourse with his disciples in St. John chapter 14, we understand that Thomas says to the Messiah, Christ in verse five, how do we know the way? Jesus says to him in verse six, I am the way, the truth, and the life. No one comes to the Father but through me. So we get a chance to understand 
that the Father is the Spirit and the Son is life. It's what we must understand. So we have the counsel of the Godhead before the creation of the universe, before time, matter, space, and place. You see, like Jesus told his audience, I am not from this world. Jesus is from another dimension, the spiritual realm. In Genesis chapter one, in verse 26 and 27, then God said, let us make man in our image according to our likeness. They will rule the fish of the sea, the birds of the sky, the livestock, all the earth, and the creatures that crawl on the earth. Genesis uh, chapter two. Let me back up. Verse 27 in chapter one. So God created man in his own image. He created him in the image of God. He created them male and female. So we see in Genesis chapter two in verse seven, then the Lord formed the man out of the dust from the ground and breathed into his nostrils the breath of life and man became a living being. We must believe in what we read. We must believe that this is of divine origin that we read and we accept this into our lives and it gives us life as in first corinthians chapter 15 verses 45 through 49 so it is written the first adam the first man adam became a living being and the last adam became a life-giving spirit so was the first Adam a divine being? No, he wasn't. God breathed into him the breath of life and he became a living being. The second Adam is a life giving spirit. He is, according to Hebrews chapter 7 and verse 16, the indestructible destructible life. He proved that in the fact of being resurrected from the dead. He is the endless life, the uncreated life that uh, conquered death and has given us life today. The gift. Next point is the gift. The indescribable we must give thanks to the indescribable gift of god says paul to the corinthians in uh second corinthians chapter 9 and verse 15 which means that man cannot even begin to describe the work of god and his gift as if you read in uh Ecclesiastes that no matter how much man try to figure out God's creation, he will never figure it out. He'll never. There's just some things that God allows us to know. And then there are some things that we will never know until that day. You see. So in Romans chapter five, verses 15 through 19, but the gift is not like the trespass. For if by the one man's trespass, the many died, how much more have the grace of God and the gift overflowed to the many by the grace of the one man, Jesus Christ. And the gift, that is the indescribable gift, is not like the one man's sin because for one sin came the judgment resulting in condemnation but from many transgressions came the gift resulting in justification. Since by the one man's trespass, trespass, death reigned through that one man, now much more will those who receive the overflow of grace and the gift of righteousness uh, reign, the righteous reign of life through the one man, Jesus Christ. So then as, 
through one trespass, there is condemnation for everyone. So also through one righteous act, there is life giving justification for everyone. For just as through one man's disobedience, the many were made sinners. So also through the one man's obedience, the many will be made righteous. We have been justified. We have been acquitted. You know, the other night I had a dream about Chauvin or whatever that guy's name is out of nowhere. And when I heard the judgment, five years, I woke up and was like, nah, that can't be right. right? So we have to be thankful that we can escape the judgment. I'll never forget the time when I was in prison, when I was walking through a certain, they was leading me through a certain quarter and I saw condemned. I'm like, man, what does that mean? And then when I understood what it meant, it meant that those guys are going to die. So when we see this right here, that means that you are going to be eternally separated from the presence of our Lord. You're talking about being uh, justified, or you're talking about being judged and condemned. We want to be justified. So in 1 Corinthians chapter 15, verses 21 through 23, for since death came through a man, the resurrection of the dead also comes through a man. For as in Adam all die, so also in Christ all will be made alive. But each in its own order, Christ the first fruits, afterwards at his coming, those who belong to Christ. We must understand that in the beginning, God set life and death before man. In the garden, you had the opportunity to take of the tree of life or to take of the tree of knowledge of good and evil. And man chose good and evil, but thanks be to the Lord, that the Elohim restored him by covering them in, in animal skins. So apparently he showed him how to sacrifice. So he restored that relationship, but the fact remains that he had to send the seed according to Genesis chapter three and verse 15. First Corinthians chapter 15, verses 48 and 49. Like the man made of dust, so are those who are made of dust. Like the heavenly man, so are those who are heavenly. And just as we have borne the image of the man of the dust, we will also bear the image of the heavenly man. Right now we are seeing so much corruption in the world because man has not been transformed or uh, regenerated by the working and the regeneration of the spirit of God. So we understand that according to 1 John chapter five and verse 19, we know that we are of God. We know this, but the whole world lies in the power of darkness and sin. That is why you see in so much murder going on today. That's why you see so much uh, disrespect of our elderly today. You have people walking past elderly people and then socking them and knocking them down. Where's the respect that? Jesus said that uh, the love of many because of lawlessness, the love of many will grow cold. And this is what we are experiencing today. Those of us who are in Christ, we don't, we don't act like that. You see these people in the world, those who are in Adam, we have two realms. The realm that is in this world, you are still in Adam. And then the realm where you are in Christ, where you have been baptized into Christ for the remission of your sins. When we look at Acts chapter 2 and verse 38. And this is going to be my final point. Citizenship. 
We have witnessed over the years hundreds of thousands of people migrating where to? America, democracy, land of the free. That's what the world, that's what they see. They see us eating McDonald's and Burger King and Pizza Hut and good old fried chicken. They want some of that. Say, let me get over there to America. I'll make something of myself. And so you have immigrants in this land today that has contributed to the building of America. You understand? But only if we can have that type of migration into the kingdom of God. That's where it's at. Not falling away. More and more people are falling away from the kingdom of God. So, so then, in Ephesians chapter 2 and verse 11 through 13. So then remember that at one time you were Gentiles in the flesh, called the uncircumcised by those called the circumcised, which is done in the flesh by human hands. At the time you were without the Messiah, excluded from the citizenship of Israel, foreigners to the covenants of the promise, without hope, without God in the world, but now in Christ Jesus, you who were far away have been brought near by the blood of the Messiah. You must come in contact, you must seal your faith right there in that empty tomb right there with no water in it. I don't know how we're gonna baptize you today. I don't see no water. But anyway, that's the thought. That's where you seal your faith. It's by believing. That's why Jesus told his disciples in, in uh, Mark chapter 15, verses six, uh, 15 and 16, for them to go out and preach the gospel to every creature. He that believeth and is baptized shall be saved. Who, he that does not believe shall be condemned. There go that word condemned. So the Godhead is not planned. When he says that you will be condemned, that means that you are judged and your relationship with him is over. So we must understand this. So in Philippians chapter 3 and verse 20 and 21, but our citizenship is in heaven. See, our citizenship is in heaven, from which we also eagerly wait for a savior, the Lord Jesus Christ. He will transform the body of our humble condition into the likeness of his glorious body by the power that enables him to subject everything to himself. This is what it's all, all about. It's being transformed day by day. We learn day by day. If you're not reading the scriptures, you're not getting the spirit in you, you're not learning, you're not growing, try to go uh, four weeks without eating. We'll see what happened to you. So that brings me to Romans chapter eight, verses 28 through 30. We know that all things work together for the good of those who love God. Now this is what we must understand. All things, no matter what, if it's good, or bad, happy, or sad, whatever it is, if you love God, things are gonna work out for you. I believe in a faithful creator. Those who are 
called according to his purpose. You see, we know that all things work together for those of those who love God, those who are called according to his purpose. For those he foreknew, he also predestined to be conformed to the image of his son so that he would be the first among many brothers and those he predestined he also called and those who he called he also justified and those who he justified he also glorified like derek read in our hearing this morning concerning hebrews chapter 1 verses 1 through 4 he is the express image of his majesty he is the express image of the father and guess what he wants to conform us into the image of his son amen that is what god wants to do in our lives is for us to be conformed into the image of his son have you been baptized in the christ if not you may want to do so so that god can start uh that transforming process to be conformed into the image of the son if you stand in need of prayer we will pray for you at this point in time the lesson is yours may god have uh, a blessing to the hearers of his word thank you